Hi everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. Uh, in this session, I am going to talk about uh, Shakespeare's The Comedy of Errors. Uh, this play is uh, Shakespeare's, uh, uh, one of his uh, early plays. Uh, this play was written as a farce, like you know how Tempest has uh, witty of the time. This one was regarded as a farce uh, since the play with the major part of uh, the humor coming from slapstick and mistaken identity, in addition to uh, puns and wordplay. This play has been adapted for uh, opera, stage, screen and musical theatre numerous times worldwide. In the you know, centuries following its premiere, the play's title has entered uh, the popular English lexicon as an uh, idiom for uh, an event or a series of events made ridiculous by the number of errors that were made throughout. It's, you know, idiom uh, came, was coined uh, through this play. And this play was uh, set in Greek uh, city of uh, Ephesus, E-P-H-E-S-U-S. -E uh, this play conveys, you know, the story of two sets of identical twins who were uh, accidentally separated at birth. Now, let me list out uh, some of the characters of uh, this play. Solinus, yes, O L I N U, yes, Solinus uh, is the duke of uh, the country called uh, Ephesus, the city called Ephesus. Uh, then uh, Aegean, E G E O N, Aegean is a merchant of uh, Syracuse, S Y R A C U S E, and uh, also the father of uh, Antipholus twins. And Emilia, Emilia is uh, Antipholus' last mother and uh, wife to Aegean. Yeah, Aegean's wife. Uh, Antipholus of uh, Ephesus and Antipholus of Syracuse, uh, they are twin brothers, uh, son of uh, Aegean and Emilia. Then um, Dromeo of Ephesus and Dromeo of Syracuse, they are twin brothers, uh, bondmen, each uh, serving his uh, respective Antipholus. Adriana, uh, she is uh, wife of Antipholus of Ephesus. Then Luciana, uh, this is, uh, Luciana is uh, Adriana's sister, uh, you know, was in love interest of Antipholus of Syracuse. Then uh, Nell is a uh, uh, maid to Adriana, uh, of course, wife of uh, Dromeo Ephesus. Then Balthasar, Balthasar is a merchant, Angelo, a goldsmith. Uh, then uh, Courtsen, then merchants like you know, first merchant and second merchant. Uh, first merchant, the friend to Antipholus of Syracuse, and the second merchant uh, to whom Angelo is in debt. Then uh, Dr. Pinch uh, is a conjuring schoolmaster. And there are people like, you know, Gualer, headsmen, officers and other attendants. So these are the characters you know, which are involved in this play. See, uh, the Bengali writer uh, Yeshwar Chandra Vidyasagar, uh, he adapted uh, the play in the uh, name of uh, Branti Bilas. Uh, B-H-R-A-N-T-H-I. B I L A S H Branti Bilas. He adapted that. This play focused on uh, the rivalry of uh, the two cities, uh, Syracuse and uh, Ephesus. Uh, Antipholus of uh, Syracuse and his servant Dromeo of Syracuse. They arrived uh, in Ephesus, which turns out to be the home of their uh, twin brothers. Antipholus of Ephesus and his servant Dromeo of Ephesus. When the uh, Syracusans encounter the uh, friends and families of their twins, a series of wild mishaps based on uh, mistaken identities which led to wrongful beatings, uh, a near seduction, uh, the arrest of Antipholus of Ephesus and false accusation of uh, infidelity, theft, madness and uh, uh, demonic possessions. So this play opens like uh, the uh, uh, merchant uh, Syracuse uh, was not permitted from entering the uh, Ephesus uh, because the law doesn't permit uh, to entering uh, from Ephesus. The elderly Syracusean trader uh, Aegeon who faces execution when, his, uh, when he was found in the city he can escape, you know, only by paying a fine of, you know, a thousand marks. So he tells this, you know, sad story to uh, Solinus, uh, who is, you know, Duke of uh, Ephesus. At his, you know, young age, uh, Aegean got married uh, and had twin sons. A poor woman um, who came without a job uh, gave uh, twin boys. Uh, he purchased these uh, as servants to his sons. Uh, see, after that... Um, the family made a sea voyage and was hit by a tempest. 
uh, Yi Jian lashed himself uh, to main mast uh, with one son and one servant, and his wife took the other two infants. His wife was rescued by one boat, Yi Jian by another by another boat. Uh, Yi Jian never again uh, saw his wife uh, or the children with her. Recently, his son uh, Antipholus, now grown, and his son's servant uh, Dromio, who left to Syracuse to find their brothers. When Antipholus did not return, Eugen set out in search for him. So uh, the duke is moved by uh, the story and uh, grants uh, Gion one day to pay his fine. And uh, one day the Antipholus uh, came to Ephesus uh, to search for his brothers. Uh, he sends Dromio to deposit some money at the you know center and in okay it's a hotel. Uh, he is you know confounded when. Uh, the identical Dromeo of Ephesus uh, appears uh, almost immediately and uh, denied uh, any knowledge of money and asking him uh, home to a uh, dinner. He's asking for, you know, dinner when his wife is waiting. Antipholus thinking his servant is making uh, insubordinate uh, jokes uh, and beats Dromeo of Ephesus. Now, uh, the Dromeo of Ephesus returns to his, uh, his mistress uh, Adriana saying that her husband uh, refused to come back to his house and even pretending like, you know, he doesn't know her. Adriana, uh, concerned that her husband's eye is straying, so uh, takes this news as a confirmation of her uh, suspicions. Now, Antipolis of Syracuse, uh, who complains, uh, like, you know, I could not speak with Romeo since at first I sent him from the mart, uh, meets up with Romeo, meets up with the Romeo of Syracuse, who now denies making a joke about Antipholus of having a wife. Antipholus started beating him. Suddenly, Adriana rushes up to Antipholus of Syracuse and begs him not to leave her. The Syracusans uh, cannot uh, but uh, attribute these strange events with, to witchcraft, uh, remarking uh, that Ephesus is known as a varan of witches. Now, Antipholus and Romeo will go off with his uh, uh, strange woman, the one to eat dinner and uh, the other to keep the gate. Now, the Antipholus of Ephesus returns home for dinner and uh, is uh, enraged to find that uh, he is rudely refused to, to enter his own house by uh, Dromeo of Syracuse. So, uh, he is keeping the gate. He is, you know, one who keeps the gate. He is ready to break down the door, but uh, his friends persuade him not to make the scene, not to do that. So, he decides uh, instead uh, to dine with uh, you know, Cortesan. Inside the house, uh, Antipholus of Syracuse uh, discussed that uh, he is very attracted to his wife's sister, uh, Luciana, telling her that, uh, Try me not, sweet mermaid, with thy note, to drown me in thy sister's flood of tears. He says like this to his wife. She is flattered by his you know, attention, but uh, worried about uh, the their moral implications. After she exits, uh, Dromeo of Syracuse uh, announces that uh, he has discovered uh, that uh, he has a wife, uh, Nell, uh, who is a uh, you know, yeah, hideous kitchen maid, okay, hideous kitchen maid. The Syracusans decide to leave uh, as soon as possible and Dromeo runs off uh, to make travel plans. Antipholus of Syracuse uh, is then confronted by Angelo of Eurofusus a goldsmith who claims that Antipholus ordered a chain. Uh, Antipholus is forced to accept the chain. Uh, Angelo says that uh, he will return for payment. Antipholus of Ephesus uh, you know, dispatches Romeo of Ephesus to uh, purchase a rope uh, so that you know he can beat his wife uh, Adriana for locking him out. Then uh, he is accosted uh, by Angelo who tells him, like, uh, I thought to have a tain you at the uh, Porphentine. He said like this, and asked to be reimbursed for uh, the chain. He denies uh, ever seeing it and is promptly arrested. As he is being led away, Dromeo of uh, Syracuse arrives, whereupon Antipholus dispatches him back to uh, Adriana's house to get money for his bail. After completing this errand, uh, Dromeo of Syracuse uh, mistakenly delivers the uh, 
money to antipolos of syracuse the courtesan uh, spies antipolos uh, by wearing a gold chain and says you know he promised it to her uh, in exchange for her ring the syracusans deny this plea the courtesans resolves to tell uh, adriana that uh, her husband is insane dromio of ephesus returns to uh, the arrested antipolos of ephesus with a rope antipolos is infuriated and taken to adriana's house now uh, the syracusans enter carrying swords and everybody runs up for a fear uh, believing that you know they are uh, the ephesians uh, out for vengeance uh, after uh, somehow escaping their you know bonds now adriana reappears with you know henchmen who attempt to bind the syracusans they take you know uh, sanctuary in nearby priori where uh, the resolutely protects them suddenly the abbess enters with the syracusan uh, twins everyone you know begins to understand the uh, confused even some the day not only uh, are the two sets of twins to reunited but uh, the abbess reveals that uh, she is the agent's wife emilia uh, the duke uh, pardons agent and uh, all uh, exit into the abbey uh, to celebrate uh, the reunifications of the family so this is how uh, this play gets you know ended and this play is a modernized adaptation of uh, the Menakshmi by M E N A E C H M I uh, was written by uh, Plato's as Williams Warner's translations of the classical drama was uh, entered into uh, the registers of uh, stationers company on uh, 10 June 1594 uh, was published in the year 1595 and uh, uh, you know dedicated to lord uh, hanston the patron of the lord chamberlain's men uh, it has been supposed that shakespeare might have seen the translations in uh, manuscript before it was printed though it is you know uh, equally possible that uh, he knew the play in the you know original latin so this play contains a, a, a topical reference to uh, wars of succession in france which would fit any date from 1589 to 1595 charles witworth argues that uh, the comedy of errors was written uh, in the you know later part of 1594 uh, on the basis of historical records and uh, textual similarities with other plays uh, shakespeare wrote around at this time this play was not published until it appeared uh, in the first folio uh, in 1623 this play was adapted and rewritten extensively particularly you know from the 18th century on uh, with varying reception from the audiences uh, you know like uh, many other shakespeare plays with this the lecture gets over uh, thanks for listening uh, subscribe the channel